Welcome to the transcript, Northampton High School student news broadcast. This broadcast is run by the Northampton Technology Department's Communications and Media Production class. Our dedicated team of reporters, videographers, and photographers will cover national, local, and school current events. This school year, NHS students were surprised with a renovated cafeteria area called the Servery. High tables, racks of chips, and an ice cream cooler were introduced to create an upgraded environment for the lunchroom. According to John Trenfaglia, Director of Food Services for the Northampton District, these changes are just the first in a long line of modern and fun renovations for the cafeteria. Here's an interview with John. My name is John Trenfaglia, and I am the Food Service Director for Northampton Public Schools. For public schools now, this is my going on my 16th year. For the new renovations that are going on right now, we, what we wanted to do is try to create some type of a college campus style feel within the high school. So what we ended up doing this year is, as you can look around and see, we changed around some of the paint. We added some new signs. We added flat screen TVs that bring a touch of technology in. We brought uh, chips, frozen treats, and beverages into the cafeteria in order to offer to students uh, a choice within their lunch. There's been a lot of key players involved in it. Uh, Candace Walzak, the business manager for Northampton Public Schools, and then also the school committee too. The people that were involved in the actual work of it all, uh, Roger Bishop, who is one of the main members of Northampton Public Schools, and he helped create the new signs that we have, the mounts for the televisions, uh, some of the painting, and we, then we had some other students and other people that were involved in it also. When I first started here, if a student wanted to buy just an apple, we didn't have a way in which to ring it into the register. So we changed a couple things last year. We always look at trying to improve and to bring more cash flow within the food service program, which of course helps us buy better food and continue to grow and offer more choices for the students. Some of the pieces that we're looking at is the front foyer area where the old vending machines currently were at, the little nook that's underneath the stairs over there. We're talking about slowly changing that into a, a, like an outdoor bistro or a sidewalk cafe type setting. Within the actual cafeteria itself, we have uh, two TVs that haven't been used, from my understanding, for a while. Uh, we're looking to change those out to 65-inch flat screen TVs. Uh, other pieces that we're looking to do is uh, within the serve area that you see, some of the walls you see are still a little bit bland. I'm going to be talking to the art classes and to see if they'd be willing to use our area as some type of an art gallery that they can show off the students' work. What we're trying to do here is create a space that students can feel comfortable in and to come down and get something to eat, um, something to snack on, or something to drink. Um, if you walk into an environment that's kind of stale, you might go once or twice, but you like to have kind of excitement around you, and that's what we'd like to create here. My move from the Berkshires school launch programs to Northampton Public Schools has been an amazing fit for me. It's an incredible challenge, but I'm enjoying every day of it, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for us. Y'all ready for this? Hello, and welcome to the first edition of Hamped Up. I'm your host, Connor McClendon, here with all of your sports news from around NHS. Ryan Braden was key to Northampton's 50-6 victory over Minichug in week one of the football season. I sat down with the starting quarterback to discuss his views on the football team. Freshman year, I was, you know, played quarterback on freshman and JV teams, so I had experience a little bit. Going into my junior year, Andy's sophomore year, we were both switching time at each uh, position, and coach thought my arm was better and thought that Andy was a better blocker, he was a little faster, and he was taller, so we thought we could exploit that, and it's worked out pretty well. Sledge had called me a couple times and he was thinking about trying me at quarterback and I wasn't sure about it, how I felt. Um, I don't think, An I told Andy like, I think Sledge has these ideas um, and we were both kind of, just we just played it out really and Sledge made the decision. Definitely didn't expect a game like that. Um, we thought they were going to be a pretty good team, um, but we definitely knew we could win and it was just exciting for us to be able to win by that much going away like that. I am I watched the film, I'm pretty sure I was out for a total of four plays. Um, yeah, uh, you know, it was 80 degrees out so it was really hot and we were tired but our coaches got us in good shape so that was, I, you know, I didn't have to come out. Tough games, the next game ahead of us so, you know, we got Long Meadow. I think we're excited um, but it's Long Meadow, they're going to be good. 
there's no two ways about it. Um, so we just have to prepare really well this week for a really good game. They run, their offense is pretty similar to ours, so we kind of know what to expect, but with them, with them, they're big. They have a bunch of big linemen and their backs are just, you know, average running backs. Whereas we have smaller, quicker linemen and our backs are a lot faster. Offensively, we'll be fine because that's just us executing, but um, defense, I think we'll figure it out um, during the week with the coaches telling us, you know, what we need to do. Both the Northampton boys and girls cross country teams got out to 2-0 starts on the season with wins over Amherst and Westfield in their first two meets. The field hockey team had a huge 10-0 victory over Franklin Tech in the first game of the season. They are also off to a 2-0 start. Girls soccer is 2-0-1 through their first three games and have outscored opponents 9-1. And finally, boys soccer is 0-2-1 and has a tough matchup against Longmeadow this Friday as they will be missing a couple of key starters. This Thursday, 22-year-old Amherst High School graduate Solomon Goldstein Rose won the Democratic primary for 3rd Hampshire District State Representative. He's slated to win in November, as there are no Republican or Independent candidates to oppose him. A cornerstone of his campaign is eradicating climate change, and Goldstein Rose advocates for young people to take charge in government. Here's an interview with Solomon Goldstein Rose. So I'm Solomon Goldstein Rose. I grew up in Amherst, went to ARHS, and just won the state rep primary for the 3rd Hampshire District, which is Amherst Pelham and half of Granby. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Solomon. Uh, so what led you to run for 3rd District Representative? So I, I worked with Ellen Story when I was 12 and a couple times since then, and I heard in 2014 that she might be retiring, and I started wondering about this. I was getting more into politics at the time, having done some internships, and decided having seen in the legislature how they often ignore these larger changes we need, the system level bills, I decided I was going to run for the seat that was opening up. What is your advice to kids who are similarly trying to establish themselves and you know, get respect? If you think about these, these subconscious ways that people assume that a young person is not qualified or not um, smart or articulate on the issues, about the history or right. Being confident, being articulate about saying what I was trying to say. I'm not saying every kid should go into politics. Yes. I would love a lot more of us to. But also, if people are interviewing for a job, mm -hmm. learning the techniques of how to communicate effectively, I think is one of the most important skills we can teach. So, a common refrain this election season is that politics and government are rigged, that they don't work for the common person. Has your experience validated that claim? No. At the local level especially, it's very easy for someone to get involved, to get elected even. Um, it's about who outworks the other candidates. It's about caring and being engaged. And if you think that you can make a difference, you can win an election. So, I'm finishing up a little bit. What do you say to the people, because we're leading up to a big national election yeah. right now, what do you say to the people who are leaning towards writing in, voting third party? Vote for Hillary Clinton. She's going to be a wonderful president, and our system works that you have a choice. That's the way our election works. We can't change that before November, so vote for Hillary Clinton. <laughs>
the new people coming in every year. We base the song choice and the, the um, harmonies and the arrangements on each group every year. We personalize the group. So it's just, it's a brand new thing every year. People can't wait to see what it's going to be each year. And I can't wait to see what it's going to be each year. As a group, I really hope that we can be really tight as the group last year was. There are a lot of young people in the group this year, and it's brought a really exciting energy. Personally, um, I, being a senior, I just want to um, sort of take a position in the group where um, people feel like they can talk to me and I feel like I can talk to everyone else in the group um, and make everyone feel welcome. Everyone in the group is really, really happy to be in the group and it's not like they're just goofing around. They're always trying to be their best and be a good friend to everyone in the group. I don't know any other kind of standard but a high standard. And, and especially a group like this that's auditioned, there's no other choice. It's like a varsity team, but the problem is we have to win every game every year, or the audiences will stop coming to see us. The great thing about the Northamptons is that reputation kind of exists, so people, people are excited to, to see the Northamptons perform. I hope we can build a cohesive group that really works well together um, and really strives to give an awesome performance for their audience. Um, I always wish, and in high school it's hard to do, but that the students get out of themselves, forget about themselves, and really sing for their audience. It's coming to rehearsal every day and being able to, you know, be friends with everyone, and it's a, it's a very, it's very close-knit group. The Northampton Blue Devils football team won big in Friday's game against Minichar. Quarterback Ryan Braden and running back Elijah Davis were key players in the game. Here's an interview with head coach Pat Slajewski about what to expect for this season. The Northampton football team proved that they will be a force to be reckoned with in 2016 with a dominant 50-6 win over Minichog in the season opener. The Blue Devils came into the game as underdogs, but head coach Pat Slajewski said that his team was well prepared for the matchup. Uh, basically, this is a very pass-heavy team, which believe it or not really plays into our strength. Even though we're a running team, we're very fast. We don't have a single guy over 200 pounds on the offense. When we translate that to defense, we match up very well with their speed receivers. So we've been working for the past three weeks specifically on stopping Minichog, and the guys executed this perfectly. Northampton has been a run-heavy team in the past, but the Blue Devils went to the air frequently on Friday night as quarterback Ryan Braden racked up 147 passing yards. We noticed last year, after we lost our last regular season game to Aguam to knock us out of the playoffs, we really started to do, not that we gave up on any games last year, but we started to focus on things we were going to be able to do this year. And one of those things was to be able to pass a little more to Andrew. We also got a very good weapon in Will O'Connor that we really didn't use today. The Blue Devils are home again in Week 2 against Longmeadow, a team that Northampton has struggled to compete against in recent years. Coach Logiski believes this game is going to be a good test for his team. It's just, it's just a chance to compete against the best. I mean, Minichog, I think they've been in the playoffs eight straight years. Longmeadow is a program that we found out from our school history and we haven't beaten since 1996. So I told the guys it's a great challenge, it's a great opportunity. But offensively, we should be very explosive. Defensively is where we got to keep getting better because we're small. Northampton has a tough schedule ahead of them as they are scheduled to play five of their seven remaining regular season games on the road. Basically, whatever they tell us to go do, we go do. We, I have no control over how the schedule is made. Uh, I don't know why that's happened, but it is what it is. We'll play who they tell us. Longmeadows suffered a loss in their season opener against West Springfield. Both the Lancers and the Blue Devils will be hungry for a win, which should make for a very exciting game on Friday night. I'm Mel Sanders, and this is Tell It Like It Is, where all things controversial are covered. This week we are delving into school security in the junior lunch ban. Along with the introduction of alarms on the auditorium and circle doors, another new precaution was also introduced to the junior class. Juniors are not allowed to leave the building for lunch anymore. And this is all in the hopes of reducing unsafe driving and carpooling during the 25 minute lunch period. According to Mr. Lombardi, the junior class was informed of this change when they were freshmen. However, when interviewing students, the majority of them had no recollection of receiving this message. So, what are the consequences of leaving? The student handbook states, if a junior or underclassman leaves during lunch, they will get an after-school detention or worse. Mr. Lombardi said in an off-camera interview, quote, is this new rule 100%? Probably not, but that's the nature of the beast, end quote. So, I took to the halls and started interviewing kids on their opinions. 
and this is what they thought. I'm Carmen O'Connell, I'm in 11th grade. I'm Amia and I'm in grade 11. I'm Julia Weissacher and I'm a sophomore this year. Hi, I'm Zion, I'm a senior. I'm Xava Brandrup and I'm in 11th grade. I don't really think it's fair that the seniors are allowed to go out and the juniors were allowed to go out previous years. I feel kind of frustrated because last year the juniors were allowed to go out. So why do you think this happened? Why do you think there was a ban? I don't, I don't know. I think Miss Malvizzi was just like bored and didn't know really what to do. She was like, you know, I want to put alarms everywhere. You know, I don't think juniors should be able to go to lunch. Everybody in my grade always sneaks out when they aren't supposed to. Malvezzi thinks we're less mature. Just spit it. You spit it? I can spit it. Uh, standing here in the hallway, same type of things that I see all day. It's very gray, it's all the same to me. I just need some things to variate the scenes. I need something to change the visions that I see every single day of my life. I need some light, I need to leave, I need to be free, I need to see the things that I need for my soul to grow. You know it's true when I come through with some no more bars for you, NHS High School, maybe. As you can tell, this is a touchy topic. So what do you think? Do you think juniors deserve the right to go out to lunch, or is this a right only reserved for seniors? Well, if you have any opinions or on other controversial topics, email me at msanders at northampton-k12.us and I may cover your story. Again, I'm Nell Sanders and this was Tell It Like It Is.